My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. <laughs> Rahamanda Sabrahila Konda Rabahash Seligabundra Paraski Falandra Maradadas Rahimata Sapali Marata Sundarahas Shalabanda Patu Paradiga Sadash Rakabanda Patu Suzuria Nala Amanda Hai Seligabundra Parustus Kabalina Rakabanda Parasila 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 Pelo Mantra Pago Brahila Kabas Thank you Holy Spirit Father we thank you In Jesus precious name Precious Father, we thank you for tonight. Even as we congregate under the auspices of your spirit. We ask that by the economy of mercy, you will grant us capacity tonight. Strength and access into the realms of mysteries. The realms of insight. Where men are strengthened beyond their weak and feeble limitations. Father, we ask that you grant us the kind of mercy that the children of Israel had. That caused them by priesthood to legislate and to litigate against the forces that had them bound for 430 years. And on the strength of that priesthood, they walked through the belly of the Red Sea and they defied the powers of Leviathan. Walked on dry ground, dead zones, until they found their place in you, a land that flows with milk and honey. Tonight, Lord, we ask that you will grant us access to walk in deep waters. Grant us the capacity to find the ancient paths where the patriarchs of old walked. The places where they kept their feet and on the strength of that ground they altered even the powers of the constellation and made every force in creation to walk in their favor. Grant us such insight, such strength, such access tonight. So that the weakest one among us will become a mighty nation. We ask that beyond the utterance, let there be a tangible communication of your spirit and your essence. That essence that will not deplete, even though all creation depends upon it for sustenance. Furnish us with it tonight, Lord. We give you all the glory. And we trust that that which you have in mind. For this noble gathering will be achieved even by the power of your spirit. Take all the glory, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Wow, that was awesome. You may be seated. God bless you. Tonight, I would just have to, because of the little time, do a little definition of terms, and then we'll do a little demonstration of what we'll be sharing.
so that men can be brought into the reality of what we talk about. The beauty of the gospel is not in the intelligent nature of its presentation. The beauty of the gospel is in the power that it communicates in order to make the receptors become what it talks about. The doctrine of righteousness will be a waste if all you know about it is the intelligibility of its creation of its design until it becomes an experience it is not a gospel the difference between a teacher, a preacher or a proclaimer and a lecturer is that the things we utter they are backed up by a government from another realm making those words potent in the lives of the hearers and they become that which is uttered Tonight, there is not so much that may be communicated in articulate speech. But the good news is that certain truths and certain realities, they are transferred, they are impacted as a body of spirits. So even if you don't understand what will be shared, the spirit will be impacted. And you will discover you will be changed into another man. I trust God tonight for a very tangible transformation in the lives of the hearers. So that there will be a notable difference in your life from this day forward. Glory to God. I want to appreciate God's servant, a dear friend and a brother who has given us the privilege to be here even this evening to share the word of the Lord. Can you please celebrate Jesus for my brother Friday. <laughs> and now it's, it's such a great honor. He's a man that emits such a, a beautiful flavor of the Holy Spirit. And if you listen to him, you'll discover that we drink from the same fountain. Glory to God. I want to salute my brother and covenant friend and brother covenant brother and friend rather Victor but who came with me this evening he's been standing in for the past two days and I'm sure you've been tremendously blessed you see there is not so much I can say tonight because he would have said virtually everything I want to say except that the word of God is fresh it's fresh every time it comes down my sister, sister Bumi and her dear husband Guntebi are here with us Wonderful ministration. Glory to God. And Sister Vicky. Sister Vicky. Sister Vicky. You see, her ministry is going to typify most of the things I'll be saying tonight. And by the time I'm done talking, both of us will minister. Yes. You know, the last time I ministered, here, not this exact location the chants that were coming out of her spirit and the sounds she was creating that was what I listened, I didn't listen to the message I preached I actually collected my message and her worship session it was her worship sessions that I played for more than six months I kept hearing it and it kept transporting me it kept transporting me She's an amazing person. Can you celebrate the work of God? I know. See, the songs programmed my mindset. I keep sometimes I just keep hearing them in my spirit. And then I when I sing them, I try to sing them the way she sang them, but I don't have that energy and that flavor. You will, you will minister tonight again. She holds a key. Listen, there are many kinds of worship ministers. There are people also when they worship, they don't hear what they say. But what they do is that they quicken your spirit, man, and then the desire to come into the presence and worship is activated. So they are ministers of the presence. There are certain persons that 
beyond ministering the present they hold keys keys to strategic places in the spirit they are activators of encounters they are activators of spiritual gifts they are activators of possibilities in the spirit so by the time you listen to them you discover that certain dimensions of God that you have not labored for we begin to find expression in your life she is such a minister that holds keys to mysteries to dimensions to realms of encounter Yahweh and we worship you for life those were her sounds from everlasting to everlasting everlasting to everlasting Everlasting to everlasting. This is how we praise and You will hear it in the room and the whole place is saturated. The power of God, the anointing of the Spirit. Visions open. Visions. Visions. I say, what did God do to this lady? Celebrate Jesus. She's a wonderful person. Do you know why I'm taking time to, to appreciate her so much? Many dimensions of God that opened in my life in those seasons, she activated them. You don't understand the mystery of the ministry of the psalmist. She was the one ministering to me consistently in that season. She activated dimensions in my life, seasons in my life that would have taken months of prayers months of fasting she's a blessing to the body of Christ I was telling of my last night I said every meeting I go for in Makodi now she will go with me and minister You see, I would, have, I would have been traveling with her, but she's a lady. And many will not understand. But I said every meeting I go, I attend the Makodi. I will personally let her know ahead of time and book the appointment. This is a special minister of the gospel. A special, a special. <laughs> You will not understand what I'm telling you. Some of us, we interpret energy in the spirit. We can interpret energy. When people are ministering, most times you can tell by the spirit the height where their voices are coming from and the kind of energy they emit. There are people you listen to, the desire for sin will die in your life because of the kind of energy they traffic the kind of spirit they traffic and as we share about sounds tonight you will understand better spirits travel on vibrations and one of the cardinal vibrations of spirit transport is sound that is why the holy spirit came to the earth realm on the wings of sounds he said there was a sound as of a rushing mighty wind and the moment they were able to decode the sound that was coming from the heavens of God the Holy Ghost began to alight so the vehicle of transport upon which the Holy Ghost came was a sound he said building up yourself upon your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost he said be not drunk with wine daring in its excess but be filled with the Holy Spirit that means if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit there are sounds that you activate and the more those sounds saturate you the more the Holy Spirit saturates you because spirits they travel on sound energy sound is a mystery it's a mystery not many know it that's why Jesus said every idle word you speak you will account for it some of the things you utter they are the things that energize demons to walk in your life and in your word 
most of the things you say carelessly they are the things that have kept you in bondage till now because those sounds they are conveyors of spirits celebrate God's servant Samson Otonu you know Samson Otonu is my very good friend he is my brother that man loves the kingdom he loves the Lord he has been given a special ministry to advance the strategic operation of God in a dispensation you see there are many people that have been given ministries but the job of others is to ensure that the ministries get to the ends of the earth everything Jesus was doing would have ended in Nazareth but there were people that were sponsoring it and even after he left they sponsored it those people are too important you can't over, over you can't over emphasize the quality of what they do in the body and somehow my friend happens to be one of the few that the Lord have chosen for this dispensation to advance the frontiers of the kingdom can you celebrate his service in the house of God I'm surprised to see my guys from the medical medical school Abba Benedict <laughs> can you imagine how did you guys come here <laughs> can you imagine Tehima is also here how did you get here see Dr. Comfort right? wow glory to God oh my God just lift your hands toward heaven we have 30 minutes to share the word of God glory to God you reign on high Adonai 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 You reign on high We will rise In your name this title but honestly it's not a concept for babes there are certain teachings that are meant for people who are actively involved in spirit business because the economy of the operation do not lend themselves to babes when we begin to talk about matters of courts young believers may not understand when we begin to talk about things that have to do with sound babes in Christ may not understand and then when you talk about power most people don't even know what it means most times we think it's about people falling down in meetings we don't really know what power is meant for they are matters of depth in the kingdom they are businesses for people that have journeyed with God to a level we are commitment commitment of life devotion unto God have become the centerpiece of their lives people that God can make bold to commit kingdom responsibilities to because at this time they are trading by the economy of mysteries it's not a topic that you can handle in a gathering of beings I'll just try to explain the peripheries at least it will help you become more conscious cautious and careful because of necessity these are part and parcel of your life in your everyday operation 
What are sounds? If I begin to define it in terms of physics, that will be the lowest level of what it is. But as we began already, let me just begin by telling you that sounds are the conveyors of spirits, the carriers of spirits, the communicators of spirits. And you need to understand that this realm is not a realm of spirits. This is the realm of man. But man is not designed to operate and live for himself. Man was designed to traffic the dimensions of spirit beings so that his life can become a summation of the desires of spirits. The needs of spirits and the possibilities of spirits. You know when John went to heaven he saw a lot of things. In fact, at a point he recorded that he saw a strong angel who was proclaiming with a loud voice. He said, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seas thereof? No man was found worthy. He was reading the charter of heaven as it as touching the purposes of men that were living in the earth realm. And unfortunately, the extent to which that angel had access to what the degree of judgment. He had no access into the portals of salvation. The possibilities in Christ that provide for our salvation was not yet disclosed to that angel. For John to have understanding of what God wanted to do as touching the destiny, the eternal purpose of man, he needed to go higher in the spirit and receive counsels from people or from beings that are operating at higher levels. And that was when he met one of the elders. And the elder said unto him, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed. If John had returned from heaven at that time, the message John would have bring to the, brought to the earth was that man is doomed. Because from everything the angel said, salvation was not captured. The angel only gave a narrative of what happened from when man was created and up to the point where man was condemned. But there were people in heaven that had higher insight and secret because of their degree of proximity with God. And it is those same personalities that define the reason and the essence for creation. You need to understand that the level of the operation in the heavens is beyond the operation of any angelic beings. They are called the 20 and 4 elders. They are the only ones recorded in scriptures to sit on thrones around the throne of God. So on the strength of proximity and stature in heaven, everything they say is from the deepest level of mysteries. And what did they say? They said all things were created for thy pleasure. That was the summary of creation. It didn't need to be brought in a very bogus statement. The summary of your existence is that you were created for his pleasure. These were the beings that explained the very reason why God created us. So you are not created for yourself. You were created for his pleasure. And these beings that are custodians of secrets that brought us this revelation made us or indicted our existence. If you are created for his pleasure, it means you have no existence unless your life begins to give pleasure to him. And the only way you can give pleasure to him is to be able to host his dimensions and to communicate it to your world so that he dominates your world and one of the ways by which his essence can be captured and transmitted is by sound so that lets you know the degree of importance of the kinds of sounds and vibrations that come out of you because every time God whose pleasure and desire is to dominate to colonize to subdue and to conquer the earth wants to have that reality that desire of him find expression it will only flow through the gateway of sound so sound is the only economy in heaven that makes it possible for the desire of God to find expression because first of all sound transmits God so what brings God into your world is sound there will be no God in your life except you understand the kinds of sound that can traffic his dimension 
did you remember when you gave your heart to Christ the Bible said if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus because if you confess you host it and on the strength of that communication Jesus becomes a part of your life because his realities and his dimension are transmitted by sounds most of us everything we say are negative you know I'm trying to be basic because of the kind of audience I'm seeing for those of you who are very spiritual sorry <laughs> you know the greatest strength of the link is at the weakest spot so we need to carry everybody along most of you you are manipulated by demons because the kind of sound you release they trap their possibilities nothing is working for me I am sick I am dying oh. I will die oh. I don't die you don't know that you are trafficking spirits and their possibilities into your life and into your world most children cannot prosper today because this kind of sound codings that they have been coded with by their parents are conveyors of costs see your big head good for nothing wasted child baboon and then when the child grow the parents begin to hope for something good to come out of the child you have encoded that child with a negative energy conveyors I don't know why nothing is working for me I don't know why I can't prosper conveyors of spirits he said as he spake unto me the spirit entered into me as he spoke you know most times we come from meeting and we say god bless you the, the people don't understand what we are doing you see the word blessing means to cause to prosper to make the possibility of prosperity to work for you so when we say god bless you we are not just using church cliche we know we are communicating a spirit that will make your life to begin to prosper even though all the circumstances around you are contrary and when you grow in God one thing you begin to do consciously is to speak words that carry the life the essence and the energy of God this is not positive theology this is understanding of how the realms operate my house is constantly saturated with angelic sounds angelic I can create the atmosphere in my room without praying I know the sound that can transmit the kind of dimensions and possibilities I want to see when you talk negative you can't live around me I don't know how to talk it I can't hear it Jesus said take no thoughts say because when you say you have created a possibility for the spirit from when that inspiration was born to be trafficked in your direction don't talk negative I tell myself I am a blessing to this world I don't care what you think I am a king I say if I come there things must work in my favor I don't know how to struggle I don't know how it doesn't matter he said there will be no water in the valley there is no water it is obvious there is no water he said but it shall be filled he said, although the fig tree might not blossom, the labor of the holy might fail. There will be no head in the storm. But I will say, the Lord is my helper. He will cause my feet to walk in my high places. He will make my feet to be like hinds feet. That's a man of understanding because he knows that his utterances are conveyors of spirits. It's a business of spirits. Some of you think it's by laying on of hands. Most of the hands that are laid on you, you diffuse them before you reach your house. You leave a meeting where prophecies were altered from the podium that you will prosper, you will go forward. The moment you go out of the meeting, you tell your brother, oh boy, nothing they walk on. The man of God plants you uproot. Most of you are uprooters of blessings. Nothing they walk on. Oh boy, this is a I go fail. I never read you. What about the possibilities of favor? 
What about the economy of mercy? What about the hand of God? What about the anointing of the Spirit? Everything that work in your favor, you don't know them. He said that the communication of your faith will become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you. It's only the bad things you know and those are the ones you talk. So you give demons license over your life. And that is why you can never be delivered. Because every time they break the chain, you circle yourself with seven more chains. Sounds, they are conveyors of spirits. It's a mystery that we may not fully understand. But the scriptures affirm it. The scriptures affirm it. And the Bible said in Romans chapter 15 verse 4. He said the things that were written at our time, they were written for our learning so that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. In First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11, he said the things that were written, they were written for our example unto whom the end of the age is come. The context of that scripture speaks about judgment, but as it is for judgment, so it is for blessings. The kind of spirit that works for you, they are contained and trafficked in sound. Why do you think when we come to minister, the atmosphere is charged? But if you want the people to be healed, you must declare healing in their direction. Because the spirit that makes for healing will travel in the direction of that fortress. If you don't alter it, they may go back. Even though the power was available, they will go back sick. The Bible said in Luke 5 17, it said Jesus was ministering and the power of God was there to him. So the energy may be there, but you direct it with your words. That's why you may stand worshiping God, you are lost in the spirit. But when we say, Lord, touch, you see people begin to fall. They were in the spirit, but the energy of the spirit was not directed. The mystery of sound, spirit, the trouble in sound. God knows this, and that is what God applies. I was teaching in Lafayette three weeks ago. I told them there are three cardinal things that govern the operation of the world. The first is the office of the Christ. The Christ is first of all the conveyor of the Godhead. So it is in Jesus that the fullness of the Godhead dwells. So when we speak about the Christ, we are making reference to God and everything He stands for. And we are also talking about the administration of the purposes of God. Because that throne regulates every other thing. Our callings are regulated by that throne. In Isaiah chapter 53 verse 8, it says, Who shall declare His generation? So your calling as an apostle is because who shall declare his generation your calling as a music minister is because who shall declare his generation the second thing are the mysteries of the kingdom which sound is one of them. the third are the principles of the kingdom God himself lives by this principle if you study the book of Genesis chapter 1 Moses was the one giving us an oversight of everything that was happening if not because Moses narrated it, you will never know there was darkness. Because you will never hear God call darkness. The Bible said the earth was full of darkness. Chaos. And the Spirit of God was moving on the face of the deep. He was moving and contemplating what he wanted to do. He never spoke. When he concluded what he wanted, the Bible said God spake. He said, let there be light. If you were the one you would have called darkness 1,000 times before you caught light because you don't have understanding. God never mentioned the darkness. Let there be light. And he said the light was. He knows that his essence is transferred by sound. Most of us, if we take an assessment of our words now, we have already condemned our lives. That is why we preach the gospel so that you will know the things that are to your advantage. Even when you fall into sin, the cure is not keep talking about the sin. 
the cure is to begin to find repentance and talk about the provisions that you have in righteousness that's how God operates it's a mystery in the kingdom I'm taking it gradually so that even the least among us we know how to apply it because it is the application that makes the difference it is not the knowledge God is not committed to what you know He's committed to what you do with what you know He said I am the Lord that confirmed the words of my servant and performed the counsel of my messengers you apply it in your life things may not seem to be working you keep talking it you keep saying it because every time you speak you give expression to the energy and the life and the essence of spirits and you don't need to be a big man of God it is a principle for operation in this realm it's a principle sound transmit spirits maybe somebody wants to say I am blessed I think somebody wants to say I'm blessed maybe what you've never told yourself before you can tell yourself in the next one minute come on you know most times most times some persons don't even know how to tell themselves good things that's why most people are easily deceived because they don't tell themselves they are beautiful so one foolish guy comes up and says hey baby you are beautiful and the lady loses her virginity she has never really appreciated the fact that she's beautiful so when somebody tells her she's surprised she's shaking oh my god thank you very much are you just being aware say man you look good and the guy loses his comportment you don't know how to tell yourself good things that's why he muffles you when somebody tells you come on tell yourself something for one minute <laughs> you will be shocked that some people have not known what to tell themselves till now Hi, dear Holy Spirit help, you, help us help us help us Lord. sounds are also transmitters of spirit possibilities sounds are transmitters of spirit based possibilities God may have a great desire for you it won't come to pass I will show you Two major things that sound transmit. Two major things. In Numbers chapter 6 from verse 23. Look at it. Maybe you should look at the scriptures. It will help. It will help you better. It will help you better. Look at Numbers chapter 6. Very quickly, verse 23. See what the Bible says. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, unto his sons, saying on this wise, Ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. Listen, God wanted to bless Israel. It was his desire to bless them. But there was no way that blessing was going to leave the realm of God to the realm of man. He had concluded in his heart to bless them. Why are they not just blessed? You say you want to bless them, then they are blessed. But blessing is just not, it's not just a feeling, it's not just a knowing, it's a tangible energy in the spirit. And it must be communicated, it must be imparted, and it must be received. Because blessings makes for possibilities in your favor. And the reason is because it is an energy. That is why if you are blessed, even if a demon wants to resist you, he can't. Because the demon, that energy opposes his own energy. When Balaam came to curse the children of Israel, what did he say? He said, they are blessed. He said, how can you curse that with God are blessed? It's an energy. The energy of a curse can't work against that energy. That energy is superior. How can you curse them? And he concluded, he said, God 
their God is in their midst. That means that energy called a blessing is also a spirit based reality. Because of the blessing, God was in their midst. God wanted to bless Israel. Do that be easy. Be blessed. He said, Tell them these words. Tell them. Because if those sound vibrations are not released, those possibilities will not be transferred. He said, The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Why don't the face not shine? It's a mystery. What you say will determine what you will become. It doesn't just inform your conviction. It is an energy that makes you to become. The empowerment that is in the blessing is communicated by the sound that interprets it. Isaac was blessing Esau in the stead of Jacob. He said, I bless you with corn and with wine. He had no corn, he had no wine. But he spoke the words. Those words have the capacity to make everything that can make wine and corn in the hand of a man to come to him. These guys were masters of these things. They knew it like they knew their names. So they don't just talk. They don't talk. These men, they talk as custodians of the oracles of God. That is why I say when a man speaks, let him speak the oracles of God they are energy they are spirits he said that the face of God may shine upon you that the contenance of God may be lifted above you and he said something when he finished the whole blessing he said place the name of the Lord upon their children with words they could place the seal of God on a man with words Jacob stood up and said Reuben according to your ordination you are supposed to be a symbol of strength and wisdom he said but today because you are as unstable as water you will not prosper it didn't matter how he was designed you see some of you are intelligent and then you think it's about intelligence so you pride yourself in your intelligence and then when you finish getting all the certificates everywhere you go looking for job you just receive your application and throw it in the trash can some of you are beautiful you think it's about beauty I went to preach somewhere I saw a 38 year old lady this lady was like an Indian what? how possible? How? I, I saw the lady I liked her how can a lady as beautiful as this not be married? Maybe when she was 22, she thought it was about beauty. So she spent all her time on the makeups. I heard there is one now they call how do they call it? Is it comma? Or I bond? Is it bond? How do they call it? <laughs> bond. So they will bond, they will put the bond so that the foundation can be built on their face. You know, these things are built nowadays. Those days, ladies raw powder. Now they build powder. <laughs> because the layer, the layer of the powder will be as thick as one cm. So they will draw, they will draw a fresh eyelash. The, the face is casted like cake. 38 years. No man has said hello. How? Not even the ones that don't have the fear of God. <laughs> at least all these guys that are looking for ladies everywhere at least one should have seen her nobody have approached her it's a mystery it's a mystery it's an energy it's an energy did you not see Jesus came to Peter's mother-in-law and the Bible said he rebuked the fever it was not a spirit that held her bound it was an energy of a spirit the same way, a spirit of course, if he imparts his energy on you, you will go with the course. So when we bless, we transmit the energy of God. We transmit it. Sounds are too important. You don't play with them. 
You don't talk because you feel like saying it. You don't talk like that. Every idle word you speak, you will account for it because the immortals they know what you are doing. You may not be aware. Ignorance is not an excuse. He said, in the days of ignorance, God overlooks, but now, but now, He commands. He doesn't advise. He commands all men to repent and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. These are possibilities that are in sound. Blessings are trafficked by utterances. Spirit-based realities are communicated by utterances. It's not necessarily when you fall. If you say you are blessed, you are blessed. You are blessed. He's on the part of his life. Until he came to a point when he broke the yoke of his shoulder. What the father spoke was actually a yoke. He said when you are tired of that yoke, you may break it. A curse that was released was a yoke. So that thing held him down all his life. He will struggle, he can't. Meanwhile, what went in his direction were words. Sounds. They are not things you play with. Sounds are conveyors of judgment. When God wants to judge you, he won't slap you. You know, most of the time, the reason we use our natural tools is because of our level of weakness. You are weak. That's why you need to slap somebody to make a statement. Kick somebody to make a statement. Spirits don't operate like that. They are superior in strength. If God wants to judge you, He will just pick the word. You are judged. And that is it. And then I asked him to Peter. He said, why have you allowed Satan to enter into your heart? The man dropped down and died. The wife came. Lied again. He said, ah. See the feet of them that carried your husband to bury there at the door. Instantly the woman went down and died. It's a mystery. It's communicated by sound. You don't know what words are. Everything fighting your life. The only way you can judge it is by your words. That is why you must guard your heart so that it is preserved as a pure fountain of God. He said, cut your heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. In Proverbs 4 verse 23. For how do those issues of life proceed from your heart? It's by your words. Most Christians talk anyhow they want. The moment they think it, they talk it. They think it, they talk it. And they don't know why their life has cut out. They can't go in one direction. They can never go in one direction. Jesus stood. And there was a sound from heaven. And the people say, ah, he thunder it. Thunder. That's where they are hearing from. You know, most of you, you hear from a lower energy level. That's why you don't know the implication of the things you say. Most of the things you say, you think you are just making, trying to make an articulate expression. You don't know that beyond what you are saying, there is something back in it that can cause havoc to your world. When Jesus was deciphering the sound, he said, now is the judgment of this world. So the judgment against Lucifer came as a packet of sound. Now is the prince of the cosmos cast out. And if I be lifted up, I will draw men to myself. Sound, they are deeper. Sound are activators of seasons and dispensations. Our sister picked the scripture from Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 1. He said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the day had no significance except as there was sound from heaven. When the day came, what activated the dispensation of the Holy Spirit was a sound. When the day came, there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 He said the son of man will return with the blast of the voice of the archangel. So the end of the age 
which is another strategic dispensation, will be activated by another kind of sound. When God wants to bring you into new dispensations of His oppression in your life, if you are discerning, you will discover you begin to hear different kinds of sound. Some of the music you love, you won't like them again. You begin to desire fresh kinds of sound. Because those sounds are transport mediums that we activate those portals for you to enter those dispensations. That's why most people that expose themselves to demonic sound, they never grow in God. You ask them, they say, is it a sin? No, it's not a sin. But you will be stunted all your life. You will never move forward. Because you don't know the damage that they cause to you. Apart from the fact that they traffic demons into your life, traffic energies from the demonic realm into your life, your heavens will be locked. Because when it opens, you will not be aware. Did you not know the Bible said, those who are in the bad places of the weak desert, he said they will not see good when it comes. They are activator. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon the holy mountain for the day of the Lord coming. That's why you see every man who goes far and does deep business with God is a man of sounds. They don't joke with it. They are men of sounds. They are men of sound because breaking news from heaven they come as sounds. They are men of sounds. Either you see them with strange kinds of music. Some are morning to night they are singing hymns. Morning to night. Some are singing praise songs. They must tell one way or the other. Sound will be part of their constitution. It's a mystery. And you must learn it so that you make the most out of it. Sound. Your seasons will only be activated by sounds. Your battles will be judged by sounds. Your blessings will come by sounds. It's a mystery. How it happens, we don't know. But we know that it is so. The greatest, one of the greatest and most amazing judgment the world have ever seen was the judgment of Jericho. He said, gather seven priests. And let those seven priests have seven horns. Meanwhile, God told Joshua, He said, behold, I have given unto you Jericho. It's kings. It's mighty men. God has given it to him. How will he get it? It's by taking advantage of the technology of sound. Go around it seven days. The first six days, blow the trumpet once. On the seventh day, blow the trumpet seven times. The wall sank. How was that possible? You will think it's only the wall that sank. Something has happened. Everybody inside the wall of Jericho was weakened. The Bible said every man went and the person he saw, he plundered him. So even babes who were not trained in the art of war, they were killing people that day. Because the sound immobilized the enemy. It immobilized them. There are many altars fighting you. What you need is the right sound. It will immobilize the altar. It will immobilize the priest. And then you will come only to pick the spoils. It's a mystery. But most times we don't know the things that are to our advantage. So the greatest enemy of your life is yourself. The greatest weakness of your life is your ignorance. Because you don't know the things that are to your advantage. Most of us, pursue men of God, we think it's about the oil. Most of these men, they are not big in themselves. It is the things they know and practice. You come to meet a man of God, it's the same God bless you that you will never tell yourself that he will tell you. The same God bless you, you will never tell yourself. That's what the man tells you. He has, he has developed his soul in eternal life until he believes in the efficacy of that word. You are sick, you come to him and say, Be healed. The same be healed, you will never tell yourself. Meanwhile, every one of us have the same Holy Spirit, every one of us have the same faith, every one of us have the same angelic cooperation. But the difference is that most of us are not developed. And the only way you develop your faith is to engage it. Sounds are creative. Sounds are creative. Is there anything you want to see happen in your life? 
begin to talk it you will be shocked you will be shocked I learned this one from the mightiest of men people like Pastor Chris they be as talking sessions he will sit down with boxers and singlet and say I'm anointed of the Holy Spirit I heal the sick I raise the dead I command bones and they are mended I'm the king, I'm the priest he keeps talking they are called talking sessions when you talk, what you do is that you educate your mind differently the reason you believe what you believe today is because you have heard it over time you may be beautiful but they tell you you are ugly you are ugly after a long time you will lose your confidence and you may be very ugly but because they keep telling you are beautiful have you seen some very ugly ladies do some things the confidence they have you see a lady as ugly as you can imagine and then when she's comforting herself and doing her thing it's as if the world is all about her she doesn't care what you think she has built confidence in her spirit she has built confidence your mind is designed to process information that's what your mind does your mind is designed to process information even if God begins to do something in your life you will need to convince yourself that this thing is a dimension if not, you'll be telling yourself this thing will work so this thing will work those of you are preachers you know now you know that the power of God is there but you want to pray for the sick your mind still begins to troubleshoot are you sure this person will be healed oh God I received this thing from the Lord I know why are you now trying to troubleshoot when I'm going for action the reason you are troubleshooting at that time is because you have not convinced yourself in the closet enough you need to educate your mind if not the world will educate you they have told you too many things and you have believed it the only way you will unlearn is to tell yourself what God says about you I stood in a meeting the anointing became strong and my convictions began to speak I didn't know what I was saying but when I heard the thing I was roaring like a lion I said I am a revivalist I am an apostle I have touched the powers of the age to come I walk in the corridors of the immortals I, it was coming that is my conviction I don't need anybody to persuade me it took many years before many people began to call me apostle apostle now apostle Arume will see me the point say my apostle Europa. I knew I was before I met him. I didn't need conviction. But as a mark of humility, I was waiting for the day of ordination. But I knew. You see people every day asking you, say, Sir, what, what, what does God want me to do? What is my calling? And then you ask them, God has been dealing with them about souls. God has been dealing with them about praying for the sick. They know what God wants them to do. But they want to hear it from you again so that they will feel happy or confident. They just want to be happy so that they will say, Kai, that man of God to say, I'm a seer. Meanwhile, three prophets have told the person already, but he wants to hear it again. Why not lock the door and tell yourself, I'm a prophet? The nations will hear me, the nations will bow. I will challenge Satan, I will fight iniquity. My generation must submit to me. What if for a prophet who doesn't believe in you say, some of those things they tell you they just want to I beg leave me alone leave me alone. <laughs> sounds they are creators God came the only way he recreated the world was by words the first time he created the world was by sound he said where were you when the sons of the morning sang into the foundations of the world so he created the world by sound he recreated the world by sound and he will create the new Jerusalem by sound anything you want to see in your life the power is on your tongue that's why he says death and life you don't tell yourself you will not see it how many times will you see preachers tell you what you want to hear how many times will you meet them there are over 100 people dropping. If I go on Facebook now, oh, you see messages. 70% of them is to tell them about what God wants them to do. I don't have their time. And it's not just about me. Imagine people who have 10 million followers. You think he has your time? The guy was walking from morning to night. He has preached in 12 meetings in, one, in 7 days. 
he is looking for where he would put his head and sleep. And then you come, you say, Sir, uh, I had a dream yesterday. He is not hearing you. If you ask him, What did I say? you'll be shocked that he didn't hear you. He is overwhelmed with bodies. What is troubling his heart is the nations. The nations. You who have been saved, you won't go and develop. Sometimes when you ask a man of God, you tell a man of God something. Try to find out in all humility. If what you said, he, don't, he didn't hear you. You want to create a life for yourself. Begin to proclaim it. He confirmed the words of his servant. He performed the counsel of his messengers. That's how God operates. Most of us have never spoken to ourselves. The only thing we remember are the insults and the causes that were laid in our lives. We can even remember the causes that they levered on us when we were 10 years old because we heard it over and over. It has formed our mindsets. The reason you see most children, they are not confident. You bring them before people and they are fidgeting. Say, take the microphone and talk. They begin to cry. There's no confidence built in their spirit. Words can destroy and they can create. That's why you begin to speak consciously to your life. It's a mystery. I began by telling you that they traffic spirits. They also traffic spirit-based possibility. It's not psyching yourself. It is saying what God says because in it is the power of God. The Bible said the gospel is the power of God. How is the gospel preached? When you meet somebody, do you think the gospel to the person? You utter it. For that power to be trafficked, you utter Sounds are creative objects. They are creative strategies in the spirit. And only men that takes advantage of them can utilize them. And lastly, on the possibility of sound, they are vehicles of transport. Sounds are vehicles of transport. You want to go to high places in the spirit, the shortcut is, is, is by sound. There's a place for prayer. I will talk to you about priesthood for three minutes before I stop. But brother, it's not all the time we need to pray. I had a busy day until 5.30 today before I came here. I needed my soul to be ventilated. If I want to speak in tongue, I will need to speak in tongue for at least two hours before I can preach in a meeting. For my tongue to be anointed. For my soul to jack up to the realm of inspiration. I've been talking to you without paper. I talk from inspiration. Even if I plan a message, I can't follow it. For my soul to be jacked up, I need to speak in tongues for at least two hours before a meeting. If I don't, I will struggle under a closet. Because my soul needs to experientially sit with Christ in heavenly places. I have 15 minutes to come for this meeting. What will I do? I went and activated sound. 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 As the song was playing, the anointing began to flow from my head. And then I told him, well, I said, Kai, it don't open. I quickly carried something. I began to write. I began to write. The whole message downloaded in five minutes. It's a mystery of sound. It's a mystery. And the beauty of operating by inspiration is that it downloads into your spirit before you can teach it. So you have first-hand experience of the message. If I'm talking, if I come for a meeting, I know when the power of God will begin to move. Because as the this way the message came, it was growing in my soul. When it exploded and I couldn't bear it anymore, if I'm talking in the auditorium, that's how it will be growing. If you read that point where it exploded in my heart, it will explode in the beauty. I am just recoiling what has already happened in the spirit. It's by sound. Never allow anything negative influence your life. Jesus said, take no thought, say. Take no thought, say. Take no thought, say. Salavandash. Korabandara valiscos. Mekronda fratiga salavanda. Shalabranda primos camara diastos. Sabalabranda duriask. Paradis. Kapiras. Rapapandra paros.
across this food. This food is only possible by sound. You may not understand the significance of this food. This kingdom, this kingdom is meant for only one set of people. They are called priests. And those priests are expected to reign as kings. Listen, the kingdom is not meant for disciples. The kingdom is not meant for servants. The kingdom is not meant for friends. The kingdom is not meant for sons. The kingdom is meant for priests and kings. Everything Jesus does for us bring us to a level of sonship. That's the highest level the finished works of Jesus can take you to become a son. A son is entitled to inheritance. The Bible said the heir, the heir, that's the son. But it is possible for the son that owns everything in the kingdom to be a babe. And the Bible said if the son is a babe, it's not different from a servant. And servants have no inheritance. The only way you can walk in this kingdom is to be a priest. The Bible said he has made us a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. The word royal is the word kingship. That means you rule in this kingdom by authority. We are the word of the king is there is power. Who can say unto him what to start? But for you to exercise authority, for you to have the experience of everything Jesus has paid for, is not to be a son, is to be a priest. Only priests have the experience of the kingdom. You don't know why you are still struggling with sin. There is no doubt you are a son, but you are struggling with sin because you are not a priest. The moment priesthood begins to find expression in your life, sin will collapse. You don't know why you are struggling with attacks. You are not struggling with attacks because you are a son. You are struggling with attacks because you are not a priest. The moment priesthood begins to rise, the experience of the possibilities of the kingdom begins to find expression. You want to touch God tangibly, it's my priesthood. The priesthood is like the tabernacle. You will travel from the gate where you see the finished works of Jesus. It takes you to the altar of sacrifice where your flesh dies. It takes you to the lava where you experience the government and the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit. It takes you to the inner court where you see the altar of shoe bread, where the word of God begins to strengthen your spirit. It takes you to the menorah where you see the seven lampstand that light things and illuminate your spirit. It takes you to the altar of incense where intercession breaks out of you. But until you leave the altar of incense, you can't enter the Holy of Holy. The Holy of Holy is the place of experience. Many don't have experience because they stop at the gate. They receive Jesus and everything is be for them. But they never travel in the gates of this truth. So they never have experience. You talk about power, they have never experienced it. You talk about holiness, they have never experienced it. You talk about wisdom, they have never experienced it. Prosperity, they have never experienced it. That is why for them, the kingdom is a set of rules. That rules that they practice and they can't fulfill. That's what the Israelites suffer. They thought it was a rule, but God was talking about relationship. He was talking about experience. He was talking about oneness. He said in Exodus 19 verse 4, He said, remember how I carried you on my wings unto myself. Unto myself. Experience is born by priesthood. And there's only one way to legislate the economy of priesthood by prayer. And prayer is possible by sound. So sound carries you to the presence. Sound carries you to the present. And until you come to the present, you can't fight the darkness in your family. You can wake up in the night and draw the altars that will not move because you have not entered the presence. You can judge and legislate with words that will not move. You have not entered the presence. The reason most of us are walking like dead men is because there is no priesthood. And priesthood is possible by the right kind of sound. It's called the sound of prayer. In your name, Adonai, you reign. Adonai, Adonai, you reign. Adonai, Adonai. 
the spirit on the Lord's day. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. But I heard a sound and as of a trumpet. And I was carried to the throne room. Listen, it's not enough to be in the spirit. It's not enough. You can be in the spirit and be lost. You need to hear the right sound to be transported to the place of your destiny. Because there are places in God. I was in the spirit. But on the end of sound, you could not see the throne room. I was in the spirit. I know most of you pride yourself to be in the spirit. But there are places in God. There are places in God. We are about to advance in the spirit. We are about to ascend in the spirit. We are about to ascend in the spirit. Can you go ahead and speak in other tongues? Shabbatadash. become accessible the gate of encounters most of you have heard about visions some of you will have your first visions tonight they are about to remove the veil the veil further further I will make the decree she will watch it for two minutes and then the gates will begin to open further in the name of Jesus Lift your hands toward heaven. In the name of Jesus. Father, as a priest, I bring your people into realms of encounters so that they begin to have experience of you. Experience. Experience. Let their eyes open. Let their ears open. Let the spirit realm become open to them. I command the heavens about them. To open in the name of Jesus. La Coparasca. Begin to speak in tongues now. La Panda Zuzia. Le Copale Sudash. Liga Papash Kapash. Zebe Branda Dias. Rabos. Seligapo. Rabamanas. Maleka Zuzia. Palatias. Jaboata. Let the spirit oh, drop open. This Let the gates open. And it's See the spirit. In the Let your ears open. Let your eyes open. Oh, God. 
I command you Come into a castle Come into a Oh, <laughs> 
them of power most of you your families have been in bondage you are the priest but there will be no power in your vessel there will be no power in your vessel at the count of three hey shata rakash bariata omelatoa zebani urina zapata 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 some welfare angels have just entered here Warrior angels, warrior angels, warrior angels, warrior angels, Shababash, 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 Rafata Sidia, Bela, 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 Yabobori, Abadia, Rewan, the Sata, Barakiloa, Santa Pataka, Robone Taba, Robone Taba, Shabatadakoa. Eba na kopore Zosotina Ya kapari ya suda Stretch your hands to us Zele kapari ya suda Spiritual energy is a tangible substance Le kapari ya tua
about to receive a fresh baptism. A fresh baptism. Don't be distracted. Lift your hands toward heaven. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Feel them afresh. Feel them afresh. Hey. Just be calm for a minute. Be calm for a moment. Be calm. Be quiet for a minute. Kingdoms have been given to the church once again. Mantles have been given to the church once again. Mantles have been given to the church once again. For the kings to be born, for the mantles to be born. certain things we inherited. Uh, we'll do this one without sound. We'll do this one without sound. This one is for people that can catch it. For those who can lambano. It's not for everybody. There are things we inherited from God I want to give you. Some of us traveled many miles. We went through many heights in order to receive them. Oh my God. Lord, let the rivers flow. As many as can receive now. 
I open it. Let them access it, Lord. Let them access it, Lord. Take. 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 Drink of the waters. Ushers, be sensitive. I don't want people injured. Take. Let the rivers flow into your vessel. Such as you desire. Such as I have received of the fathers. I make available to you. Receive in the name of Jesus. Let it cover you like a canopy. Most of you be drenched in it. Be drowned in it. Let it flow like a river. Flow like a river. Flow like a river. Authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit. Access to mysteries. Access to insight. Let the vault of revelation open to you. The gate of insight. I ask you to open. The gate of insight. Open. 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 Receive the patriarchal mantles that we received of the fathers. Open to you. Open to you. Open to you. Open to you. What we have with God that doesn't make any ground hard. We enter. We scatter it. Let it fall upon somebody now. A mantle of power. A mantle of power. A mantle of power. It falls on somebody. It falls. It falls. It falls. Jesus, I see somebody entering into a well of inspiration. A well, a well, a well flooded with inspiration. Flooded with inspiration. Take it. Jacaboria, Senatali. Zozula, Kabila, Paraskatash. Receive, receive, receive. Drink, drink, drink. It's a river. It flows. It flows. There's a river that makes glad the city of God. It flows. It flows. It flows. It flows. Oh, my Lata, I hear my spirit. Somebody is just partnering with an angel. An angel. A prophetic intercessor. A prophetic intercessor. Zatakabilas. Rapapash. 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 Zetokabilas. Zonto Patakiva Lakuria Tatash Oh, help them, ushers Jegapaligapash Blow like a mighty wind Spirit of victory Cover us with you Blow, blow like a mighty wind
Bible said the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. Right now, under the anointing of the Spirit, I declare every yoke on your life, on your shoulders, that have beset you in your walk with God and in your progress in life, I command them in the name of Jesus, be broken. He said the hand of God came upon Elijah and he outran the chariots of Ahab. It's a mystery of speed in the kingdom. I declare that under this auction, may the hand of God make for speed in your life in the name of Jesus. Go and run ahead of your bears. Overtake horses, overtake chariots. It doesn't matter the years that the caterpillar worm have eaten. The years that the canker worm have eaten. The years that the palmer worms have eaten. All the wasted years of your life. By the mystery of the anointing. I bring them back into your life. In the name of Jesus. He said Daniel and his friends. They were ten times better than their peers. Because of an excellent spirit. That was at work in them. I declare right now. In every endeavor of your life. Let there be the working of an excellent spirit in the name of Jesus. Receive, receive the spirit of excellence in the name of Jesus. Every mystery that we receive in Christ that is designed for our advantage, that is dormant in your life, I provoke it tonight. I demand, let there be an activation. In the name of Jesus. Those of you that your beginning have been small. From this day forward. I declare enlargement over your life. In the name of Jesus. Everyone that has been restrained. By family altars. Ancestral patterns. Causes. And obstructions. From their ancestry. At this point. I declare by the authority of the anointing. That let all those chains, let all those utterances, let all those energies be nullified in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. Go and subdue. Increase on every side. Rule in your world. Reign as kings forever. In the name of Jesus. And for everyone that have served in the course of this meeting. I declare that the Lord honor you. May the grace for honor come upon your life. Because you have served in the house of God. Men will serve you. In the name of Jesus. You will never be small. Everywhere you go to that you need favor to speak for you. I command the voice of favor to begin to minister on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. I declare that you are never small. You shall be ten times better than all your peers in Jesus name thank you father thank you lord give the lord a big shout of praise Thank you, Jesus. As we continue, Lord, we ask that you take preeminence in the name of Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated. Let's try to maximize the little time that we have. We are still looking at ministries of the believer. And the reason I said it's very important, it's very important we look at the subject of ministry is because everything you talk about media is just um, a platform to give expression to ministry. So it's important for you to know 
the aspect of ministry that you have been designed to give expression to. So when we get to media and then generally in life, you become, you become very conscious of what the Holy Ghost wants to live out through you. A lot of people think ministry is all about the fivefold, the fivefold. So, whenever a wave begins, everybody begins to bear particular kinds of titles. In the last 50 years, thereabout, there was a revolution, a church revolution. Everybody was either a pastor or a reverend. Reverend. Title of reverend became a title that people pursued, sorted after. Then they became bishops. You know, from pastor to reverend, then to bishop. Now it's a, it's a prophetic and apostolic wave. So every young man is an apostle. Uh, apostle, apostle. But we don't understand that it's more about giving expression to the life, the essence, the nature, the will, and the mind of the Father. So it's important we look at this subject very closely. Glory to God. So, we stopped at the ministry of prophesying. And um, if you've not learned anything, don't worry, when I talk about sound, the mystery of sound, I would, I would dig a bit deeper into it so that you see the spiritual dimension to what I'm saying. You understand how energy is conducted through your words. You understand how spirits are carried through your words. And then you understand how you summon spiritual authority through your words. So that some people will not think um, we are talking about positive thinking and optimism. Where you psych yourself. It's not about psyching yourself. If you take time and check very carefully, you discover that your words are a project, are a proponent of your belief system. And if you look a bit deeper again, you discover that your life is going in the direction of your words. The things you've said predominantly and consistently are the things that define your reality. A lot don't understand because we don't take time and take stock and appraisal of our lives and the direction our lives go. If you change your words, you change the direction of your life. It's a proven reality. So we are going to proceed from ministry of prophesying to the next ministry which is also very close to prophesying. But this more specific is called the ministry of exhortation talk about the ministry of exhortation you know prophesying also covers exhortation the thing with prophesying is that it's a bit broad it encompasses building up it com encompasses comfort and then it encompasses encouragement exhortation deals particularly with e encouragement i may come to prophesy to you but you may not be comforted the idea is to build you so sometimes the ministry of prophesying comes as a rebuke so you will not enjoy it but if you follow the instruction after some time you will discover that you are built up all right but when we deal particularly with exhortation we are dealing with consolation we are dealing with encouragement there were people that were so given to this kind of ministry like Barnabas. He was called the son of encouragement. In Acts chapter 4 verse 36. He was called the son of consolation. Barnabas was a king in, the, in this kind of ministry. It was Barnabas that sold his land. And brought to the church. When the church was in lack. And the Bible said something. He said because of what Barnabas did. Every other person brought their possession. And dropped it at the feet of the apostles. And he said they were distributed evenly. And there was none among them that lacked. So it's a ministry that encourages people to do the will of God. It's a ministry that encourages people to go in the direction of the will of God. So when a man of exhortation speaks, or if you stay closely to him and observe his lifestyle, it will become natural for you to begin to do the mind of God. Because he carries that ability and spiritual possibility. It was because of men like Barnabas that many were encouraged to begin to do the will of God. Paul after his conversion, went to the wilderness of Arabia. And he was there for a long time. Paul, Paul wanted to be in the cave, like my brother here. This man is, 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 a, is a fire. Is a fire. There is only one thing. His intestine is made up of fire. 
both large intestine and small intestine is fire. You people, any day you want to give this man a microphone, be ready in case because he may begin to charge. The, the man charges. So Paul went and locked himself in a cave. He wanted to pray there till he goes to heaven. So Barnabas went and looked for him and brought him. He said, come to Antioch. We need teachers here. You see how the ministry of exhortation works? He helps people to realize their destiny. He helps people to realize their ordination. And then he motivates, encourages, and pushes them to walk in it. There are three dimensions to the operation of this ministry. The first dimension is the dimension of a soul winner. The second dimension is the dimension of a psalmist. And the third dimension is the dimension of an intercessor. And I will show you from scriptures. Because you, you don't understand. Where does the psalmist fall into? They are also called helpers. But more predominantly, the psalmist is in the ministry of exhortation. If I give Smith the mic now and he begins to sing. After a while, the place will be charged. You that, that say you are tired now and weak. You will begin to worship God and lift your hands. And if he wants to praise, you will begin to dance. If you are not careful, the place will scatter. Because it's part of his operation. Exhortation is cardinal in the psalmist ministry. So, they are referred to in scriptures under soul winners category. They are the ones that the Bible always called they, they, they. Have you read the ministry of Jesus? You hear? And they brought all that were sick. Who are they? They. They are the people that work the ministry of exhortation. So they go tell their brothers. He said, there is somebody in town now. If you are sick, come. You will be healed. So they motivate people to come to God. To flow in the direction of God. They are so winners. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. He said, when the evening was come. He said, they brought. The sick didn't come themselves. There were people that brought them to the Lord. Are you seeing that? That's how the soul winners work. He said that brought them. They brought them. You see that? And the Bible said, Virtue left Jesus and healed them all. That it may be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Himself took our infirmities. So, they carry out the ministry of soul winning. They are, they are exhorters. If you don't have that ability in you, soul winning for you will be frustrating. It will be very frustrating. Because when you are talking, the people will not want to hear. Have you gone to preach to somebody before and they say, Oh God, before I hear with you, they talk. Hunger won't kill me now. If either you buy food, make a chop, or no way. Carry your meal, I beg, I beg, I beg. If, if I'm worried, ask this, you will understand better. You know, you talk, Oh God, now they, see, what do they talk, now I go shop. <laughs> That's when you will go back and pray in tongues for some time. You need to have the ability to exhort. So when you speak to people, something in their spirit begins to yearn for God. You know, the Bible said in John chapter 1, verse 5, it said that light is the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world. Everybody that is in this world has a measure of discernment in his spirit. And that discernment makes that person to recognize God and desire him. The ministry of soul winning gives you the ability to speak to that essence of humankind where God is so the person may not be interested in God he may even say he's an atheist but when you come by that spirit of soul winning and you begin to speak to that person that element of God in his inside we begins to we begin to yearn for God and that thing draws the person to the Lord so soul winning is not just to go with scriptures in your head or to go and threatening people and say you will die you will go to hell you will go to have you seen all those people that do money cry and the market cry most times they are most effective. Nobody even has have their time. Some don't even pray. They just come around. Hey, is real. Who are you the one informing them? They are already aware. Some have even dreamt and seen themselves in here. They are still see. You understand? It takes so much to be able to convert a soul. And we don't understand this thing because we are not, we are in a religious environment. People are already afraid. So, somebody backslide, you warn the person, you threaten the person, and he comes back to the kingdom. You think you are winning souls. Go and talk to a Muslim man. Go and talk to an atheist. That's when you understand what it takes to win a soul. It takes a lot. There's a ministry dimension to it. And if you find yourself having burdens for souls, having burdens for souls, you need to build this aspect of your life. You need to learn how to penetrate people, get into their spirit, so that you can talk to their essence. 
and then their eternal reality will begin to cry for the Lord. It is those people that drew most people to Jesus. Jesus didn't have need for many evangelists. It was only twice Jesus sent out his disciples. But every time Jesus moved, there were multitudes. The days are the ones that brought the people. It's not the disciples. The days. If they tell you Adebu is coming now, the stadium will be packed. They are the days. Oh boy, you don't hear. They say Apostle John Suleiman is coming on the 16th and 17th. The whole population of Omega Fire Ministry in this, this state is not up to 1,000. But that place will be packed. Because the days will go at work. They will be put to work immediately. So, there are many people that have that dimension. It's a ministry of exhortation. And then you have the ministry of a psalmist. The psalmist, he helps our operation in the spirit. Most times through worship. If you study 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 15. Elijah particularly asked for a psalmist. He wanted to prophesy. He is a prophet. But for him to operate in his element, he needed somebody to help him ascend. So he called for a minstrel. That's exhortation. Most times you come to a meeting dry. You are even the preacher. But your spirit is low. You are flat. You didn't have time to pray for the meeting. You came. You didn't have inspiration. Even though you have prepared your message, but the, the fervency of the spirit is not yet activated. So you need the psalmist. That's why most times we have them minister before we come up. They help you to ascend so that you can operate in the spirit. That's what is, is captured in 2 Kings 3.15. So it's a ministry of exhortation. And then you have the ministry of intercessors. The intercessors are also under this category. They build people up. I told you, Colossians 4 verse 12. Paul said, Epaphras is one of you, a born servant of Christ, laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So the prayers of Epaphras edified the church in another territory. In Jude verse 20, he said, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So the prayer dimension does something to the spirit of a man, either for self or for others. It is part of the ministry of exhortation. Somebody is weak, you are in your house, and then you receive a burden for the person. And then you began to pray. And then the person becomes strengthened in the spirit. It's an economy in the divine. And that's why most times we are encouraged to pray in tongues. Because when we pray in tongues, we pray away our selfishness. We pray beyond the borders of mortality. We enter into the womb of the immortals. And then we begin to communicate the mind, the burdens in the heart of the Father. That's where God has liberty. Most of the things God does in the world that looks as if he is violating the laws of creation. It's not necessarily violating the laws of creation. Spiritual resources are supplied in the spirit. So he has liberty. Sometimes when you speak in tongues, those utterances you have released, those mysteries you have released, gives God permission to send an angel to win another soul. So the angel may go and confront somebody, but it is you that gave that clearance. So winning is a function of humankind. But when you pray in the spirit, you make a lot of spiritual possibilities available. Hope you know it was God himself that once saw and he became poor. Are you there? There were mysteries that were at work. It's called the ministry of intercession. So as much as you can, engage that ministry for yourself and for others. That ministry may become the only thing you are called to do in the body of Christ. You see people like Smith? Every time they come, they just, their section, it, you, you know, they come and lift the church up. And then it's growing rapidly now in this, in this phase of the apostolic move of God. See a lot of people, people like Lawrence Oyo, Theophilus, Mike Etze, they are just everywhere. And when these guys come, you will know that God, what you will labor to preach and speak in tongues for two hours, the place you will take the congregation to after two hours of preaching, they will do it in five minutes. My friend Mike Etze, if he comes here, hi. They, I don't know what they have in that their voice. No wonder the Bible said, be not drunk with wine. Ephesians 5.18, wherein in it excess. He said, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking to yourself in Psalms. It makes you to be drunk in the Holy Ghost. In hymns and in spiritual songs. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. The guy will just say, and I just want to be where you are. Before you know, you start crying. And then you, you lie down. And you start drawing to go. <laughs> Meanwhile, you, you will sing that song. And you will be washing clothes. You will be washing. But somebody else sings the song and your spirit flies. It's a ministry. It's a ministry. Glory to God. <laughs> so if you find yourself in that dimension, build it, develop it. Alright? 
it will save a soul. Some people will never stand unless you pray. The church in Colossians, their faith depended on the prayer of Epaphras. Jesus said to Peter, Luke 22, 32, he said, Simon, Simon. He said, Satan desires to have you, to sift you like wheat. At that time, the stature of Peter compared to Satan was wheat. The guy had not received the Holy Ghost. He had not gained understanding in spiritual things. You know, the devil preys on your ignorance. Any area you are ignorant, you are a puppet in the hand of the devil. He says, Satan desires to have you, to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you, that your faith faileth not. That means the faith of Peter, the, the ministry of Peter, the calling of Peter, depended on the intercession of Jesus. That's how important it is. You know, most times people who are into the intercessory ministry, it's as if they are not important. Sometimes we will never see them hold the mic. They are never on the scene. They are always at the backside. You will go to heaven and you may be shocked. There are some of the people you don't see on the scene. They have the greatest reward with God. Because where they are hidden, it even makes it easy for them not to operate in the flesh. If God locks you in the room to be praying for 10 hours every day for the move of God, nobody is even seeing you. When you came out, they won't even say, come and say hallelujah. You are just there praying. And then the guy who knows a little, he just comes and shines. You say, oh boy, this guy, they anointed. You didn't know that somebody have displaced the principalities. Did you read in the Bible? Before Jesus sent out the 70, eh? he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. So when he sent out the 70, even the babes, they were raising the dead. They casted out devils. So they ran to Jesus and said, ah, the devils were obedient. The devils were at our command. Jesus just laughed. They didn't know what happened in the heavens. So an intercessor shift the atmosphere and then you enter a territory. You say, Holy Spirit, five people, 500 people go under the power. Then after the meeting, you walk like this. You are, con you are connecting to heaven. You are connecting to You didn't know that 90% of that labor was by somebody who is never known. It's when you come to heaven, then they'll say, see your senior brother. All the things you were doing, he generated it. You see? Oh, you know, there may be a pastor in Ephesus who gather. 100,000 people. And he said he's an anointed pastor. He didn't know that it was a Epaphras that is making the church to stand perfect and complete in all, the, in all the will of God. The guy is just gathering people and teaching them the ways of God. He thinks he's so anointed. The day Epaphras leave, his church will deplete. There are important things. There are dynamics in the spirit. So anywhere you find yourself, that's why there's no room for competition. Some people will shine among men. Others will shine among angels. <laughs> The most important thing is that when you appear in heaven, let the cloud of witnesses say, welcome. Because they saw your labor. Did you read about James the Just? They buy, see, church history, they say the guy will need towards a war and he will pray for three days. When he stands up, the war will crack. <laughs> they, they called him the man with the camel knee. He will kneel down for three days and the vibration he will create when he leaves the place, the war cracks. So the apostles were going to the nations and doing dangerous things. James the Just was in Jerusalem. He's not popular. I don't know him. He, his place is on the knee. It's called the Ministry of Intercession. Those are ranking entities in territories. If one of them leaves a territory, there's a vacuum in the spirit. A hundred preachers can die. It, it doesn't take so much to raise a preacher. But for a man to become an intercessor, it will take the dealing of the Holy Ghost. Because only dead men do the office of intercession. They have died to everything. Even financial game is not attached to it. Nobody will so cease to you. They don't know you. That's how it works. But we live for reward, not for awards. Don't forget that. Hallelujah. Yes, we have to be moving fast. The ministry of giving. The ministry of giving is one of the most important ministries in every dispensational operation of the Spirit of God. Let me tell you something. I did a teaching in Nenewi last week. The four wings of revival. I told them revival works majorly on four, on four wings. One is prayer power. Two is wisdom power. Three is the miracle working power. And four is the financial power. The financial power looks as if it's the most carnal. But that is what publishes the gospel to the ends of the earth. See, you can be raising dead men in your village nobody will know you and the world will not be blessed by it but the day one millionaire comes you say kai you need to be on tbn that day eh, you may have been reaching 100 people in 10 years because of the ministry of that man 
one day you can reach a hundred thousand people you may have won 50 souls in three years one day you can win three hundred thousand souls because you went on what on tbm the bible said something in ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 14 to 16 it said there was in a little village and this village a king came and besieged it with a bulwark he said but in this village there was a poor wise man whom through his wisdom the village was delivered he said but he was not remembered and the bible said something he said wisdom is a defense he said but the wisdom of the poor man is despised so for the church to stay in its position of glory in the last day the church must be full of wealth and financial power that's why he said in exodus 8 18 he said and thou shalt remember the lord thy god deuteronomy 8 18 for it is him that giveth thee power to get wealth why that you may establish his covenant which he has promised thy father even unto this day so the covenant of god is established in the earth realm through financial power in zacharias 1 17 he said my kingdom through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad so prayer power is what downloads spiritual possibilities wisdom power is what builds it in the earth realm but financial power is what publishes it to the ends of the earth your ministry will never get to the ends of the earth unless there is the ministry of giving so those who give they are very significant in the agenda of god very significant the ministry of giving also comes with a great kind of wisdom to manage because the givers are managers of kingdom financial operation so they have a lot of wisdom to manage their resources and to manage the resources of the kingdom so it works hand in hand for example joseph worked in the ministry of giving did you remember that he was the one feeding the whole world even his family when they came he gave so he coordinated it but it was not without wisdom it was wisdom that brought him there in fact what impressed pharaoh was not necessarily his ability to interpret his dream what impressed pharaoh was the wisdom he had to manage the seasons so pharaoh said in genesis chapter 41 verse 37 he said for as much as god has shown you these things there is no one in your class according to thy word shall the nation be ruled what did pharaoh say when you read psalm 105 from verse 17 to verse 22 you will discover that it was the wisdom of joseph that impressed pharaoh not his ability to interpret visions he had wise men he had magicians he had sorcerers that had those ability but there was a wisdom he had that separated him from the class of men so the bible said something he said he sent a man before them even joseph whom they sold for a servant he said his feet was bound in fetters he said he was laid in iron until the time that his word came the word of the lord tried him he said and the king said unto him even the ruler of the people he said you there were four things pharaoh gave him one he said he shall be the ruler of his household he shall be the manager of his system to teach his senators wisdom and to bind his priests at his pleasure so pharaoh was impressed by the wisdom of, jo of joseph that's why he brought him to teach his senators wisdom how do you manage kingdom resources it is part of the ministry of giving any man that god begins to trouble to give to give god wants to bring him to a place of affluence if you remain stingy you remain small but if you become libra you will become fat he said the libra soul shall what the libra soul is a man that becomes fat he said him that water it shall by himself what be watered unto. so giving is very important in the gospel there are some people that say hm, well they will give to the poor there are why do we always give to church you are not giving to church you are a trust god passes money through you to develop the kingdom the money is not your own the money will only be your own when you yourself don't belong to god if you belong to god everything you own plus yourself is god's so you will be jealous about the house of god so when we give we don't give to church you know people who are babes they give for self-gratification and self-exhortation that's why they want to give they want the man of, it's when the man of god is seen that they will bring their envelope like this and then they will write their name their full name so that they will call them later and say ah god servant if you say nobody should write their name just drop it in the basket people will change their offering but when you say come and drop the offering on the altar you see one one thousand put the offering in the basket you see 50 50 naira you count until your hand will become 
People don't understand. They think they give to men. They think they give to pastor. Even if the man of God is healing you every day, what will he add to you? That's the question we don't ask ourselves. The man is a man. I add anything to you. So you grow up and you understand that this thing is about kingdom. It's about what? Kingdom. Kingdom financiers are the people that determine the largeness of the kingdom. Men of prayer are the people that determine the dimension of God that a civilization can conduct. Men of wisdom are the people that determine the, the dimension or the civilization that a, a generation can walk in. But men of finances are the people that determine the scope of every dimension that God brings to the earth. Realm. The reason you know about healing is because it was published. And the systems of the world, they understand it. That's why they take advantage of the media so much. You think the media is all about, uh, ah, Alpha, you upload this DP, you change it in the morning, put another one in the evening, and then, <laughs> go and ask the people that created it. The ambition is far from what you are thinking. They are only taking advantage of your naivety. They have a kingdom at heart. Glory to Jesus. Ministry of administration. This one is for technocrats. The word administration is the Greek word kubo. And it means to steer, to direct, and to pilot. So this one is a ministry for leadership. Anybody that has administrative intelligence is somebody that naturally will operate in leadership. And it's God himself that ordains such people. Are we together? It does not depend on human wisdom, however, but the wisdom of God. And that is why administration was particularly included when, God was, when the Bible was talking about spiritual gifts. It's an operation of, of the Spirit of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 and 12, 28, you see the Bible talking so much about administration. The same word used for word of wisdom is the same word used for administration. It's a kind of the charisma and the flow of the Holy Spirit to give men capacity to direct. And that's why I told you that word of wisdom is a revelation of the future. Prophecy is not a revelational gift. It's a vocal gift. It's for edification, for exhortation, for comfort. When you see into the future, it's called the word of wisdom. The reason we, we mistake it sometimes is because most prophets either have word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discernment of spirit in addition to the gift of prophecy. So we, we don't know the difference. So it's for direction. Anybody that works, that has the grace for administration, the ministry of administration, is somebody that is brought naturally by ordination into leadership. That's the kind of person that will tell the church, don't invest in this, invest in this. Don't go into this, do this rather. But you will not be in a position to say that unless you are in authority. So people with this kind of graces, they are in leadership. So you are in church, somebody came after six months, is in leadership. You don't need to be jealous. These things are ministries. Your own ministry may be intercession. So you are in that church for five years, nobody appreciates you. What you are doing is to generate spiritual power for the things working to stand in the spirit. It's in heaven that men are ranked, not on earth. The ranking system we have on earth does not really know the true measure of humankind. It's in heaven that men are ranked. That's why Paul didn't bother himself so much. Paul returned from Arabia. He went to the apostles in Jerusalem. This is what God showed me so that I will not be in error. They said, come on. They gave him a hand of friendship. He said, go and preach to the Gentiles. He didn't bother to say, eh, eh, Peter, Peter. No, no, no. It's not about who men celebrate. Peter was celebrated as the head of the church. He didn't move Paul. He was preaching his gospel. It was 14 years later. He went back. In Galatians 2 verse 2, he said, I went on to Jerusalem by revelation. So even when he had to go to mingle with them, it was by revelation. It was not a man struggling for, for leadership. Say, me too, I have. No, no. This stature thing is leading people astray. So you come to church. Somebody has the ministry of administration. He's in leadership. Celebrate God. At the end of the day, it's a body life. The system will be preserved. If your place is intercession, hide there and pray and enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself in God. And forget about the applause of men. Strive so that angels will clap for you. Angels, they clap for men. But it's for men who are called overcomers. 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 Glory to God. You see that Joseph again manifested his grace so much. Joseph came to Egypt. He met Pharaoh. The next thing Pharaoh said, teach my senators wisdom. Ah! Oh God, this guy just came to the courts of Pharaoh. Why will he go and be teaching senators? Do you know who the senators are? 
these were people that were re respected in Egypt. Some of them will even begin to fight him. That was the era of Haman. Haman was in leadership, but the king, Mordecai, was at the gate. Because Mordecai didn't bow to greet Haman. Haman said he will kill Mordecai and destroy his race. That's a demonic spirit. Joseph just came to the cause of Pharaoh and said, You, you shall only be at my command. Everybody in Egypt is under your authority. Do you think, do you know how many people fought Joseph that time? A lot will fight Joseph. A whole lot. But sustain the heart of Benjamin. Who saw David and knew that the hand of God was on David. And instead of fighting for the position with David, he submitted to him. That's the mind of a kingdom personality. So, it's a ministry of administration. Ministry of mercy. I will share very, three strong things from here. So that somebody will be helped. I know a lot of people that the devil have brought into guilt. So much guilt on account of this ministry. Most of you already know that this is your area. But I need to show you what mercy is, how it is demonstrated, and to whom. Alright? Because if you don't know these three things, you may put yourself in a, challenge, in a challenging position. Mercy is simply the practical demonstration of God's love towards those in need. Alright? The love of God is, is the overflow of His nature to reach out humankind for fellowship, for oneness, for intimacy. But mercy is a bit different from love. The idea of mercy is not just to sustain oneness. It's not, it's not for fellowship. It's not for koinonia. Mercy is to reach out the resources of God to the one in need. So it's a dimension of love, but it's a love that reaches out to the one who is in need. That's why the Bible says, by mercy. Grace came by mercy. So mercy is the precursor of grace. And grace is the saving love of God. Do you see that? So it's a strange aspect. It's a unique aspect of the love of God rather. And it's to those who are in need. This is not sympathy or zeal. Where they say, oh, somebody has a challenge and you cry. And then you cry. After your emotional balance is readjusted, you go back home. Have you seen somebody, they say, Kai, people are in need. They cry as if they want to kill themselves. They now say, okay, whatever we have, let's give these people. And then the man who was crying will begin to check his pocket like this. It's the least currency he wants to pull out. So that thing he was doing is sympathy. It's not mercy. Hope you know there's a difference between sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is, um, is a feeling of pity towards somebody. Empathy is to, be, to take the place of that person. You are not just feeling towards the person. You are assuming the person's position. So you are actually feeling the pain of that person. And then you can do anything that person would have done to step out of that situation. It's a bit deeper. That's how mercy operates. Who is qualified to receive mercy? There are those who are leeches in church. And that's why I need to explain this. So that the devil will not take advantage of somebody. The Bible specifically identifies strangers fatherless people and widows as people who are qualified and candidates of mercy okay read deuteronomy 24 19 21 for me quickly those ones legitimately every time you meet them you are expected to show them mercy the bible qualifies them for mercy deuteronomy 24 yes when well, thou don't worry smith is with the mic so when thou casted down thy harvest in the field and hast forgot has forgot a chef in the field thou shalt not go again to fish it it shall be for the strangers and for the fatherless are you and, saying that and for the widows that the lord thy god may bless thee in all thy works of thy hands he said allow your leftovers so that those who have need do you get that can be helped I know some people that you see these young people struggling and then they will bargain for 10 naira with the Okadama. The guy doesn't have chain. He'll say, bring the money. They will cross over to the other side and look for chain for 40 minutes so that they will not give this man the 10 naira. Haba. Haba. <laughs> Haba. 
Do you see that? There are two things I want to show you from there. So you can only show mercy from what? The one you have to spare. Unless the Lord compares you. So don't carry the food that is meant for your children and say, I'm showing mercy. I'm showing mercy. And then you go and give to somebody else. The Bible said, the man who cannot provide for himself, his household, is worse than what? An infidel. And he has denied the faith. This is where many men of God get it wrong. The little they have for their family, they give it out. And then they come home, their wife died. There's something that happened to John G. Lake when he was in South Africa. He will be coming home with the little food he has for his family. He will see beggars on the street and give them. After a while, the wife died in South Africa. She died of starvation. And many years later, John G. Lake said he appreciates God for everything he did. But he regrets that his wife died. If he had his way, he wouldn't have gone there. Most of his family members died without believing in God. This is the evangelist that shook the whole world. There are few healing evangelists in the history of humankind like John G. Lake. Most of the testimonies in South Africa, in his books, they, they say they are not recorded. It will cause controversy. You can't believe it. It will cause controversy. Some of the things God did through John G. Lake, but he didn't understand how to administer mercy. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. That's enough. So don't, don't sacrifice the people that God has put under your authority because you say you are showing mercy to other people. You have become merciless to those people. So always begin to show mercy from what you have to spare. And if there is need, the Holy Ghost will compare you. Alright? The Bible spoke about the people in Macedonia. It said they give beyond their abilities. It's a move of the Spirit. Alright? So mercy is meant for those who are genuinely in need. In fact, Paul said that those who are widows indeed who have a record of the fear of the lord and wash the feet of the saints he said they are the ones the church should take their body so there are those who qualify for mercy it's not a widow that has a son in america or the son is a lecturer walking somewhere and then you see her say help me help me what about the son there are those who the bible say they are widows indeed because there is need for administration the jesus said the poor you will always have if you are not careful, you will give your way into. Okay, so let me not, let me stop here so that uh, it's not to my facade. It's not to my facade. And then there are people who are leeches. Be careful of such people. Go to the next verse, uh, the next uh, page. I itemize the guidelines. I said help must be within the capacity of the helper. And help should bring the help closer to jesus those are guidelines for helping make sure help is within your what capacity and make sure that help should bring the help closer to god don't go and see a stranded young person on the road and say oh, help me and then he's smoking alcohol smelling alcohol so you give him money and the next thing you see him on dry gin when he see you later in the evening you say how far i beg anything there there they, you have you have destroyed him Ensure that every time you help, you should bring the people closer to God. Either as a revelation of the nature of God or as a means to evangelize them. Alright? So help should be within the confines of your need, of your ability. And help should bring the help closer to Jesus. Help is not meant for those who can walk. In 2 Thessalonians 3.10, Paul said, Every man should labor with his hand such as he will need to eat in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28 29 the Bible says him that stole should steal no more but walk in the time so that he will have to give so you see a young man you check him there's nothing wrong with him he stands in the garage and say bros I better give me 20 naira I tell them go and walk go and walk the Bible says him that cannot provide for those of his household is worse than an infidel so don't encourage laziness in the life of anybody. If you see a man who can walk, let him walk with his hand. That's when God will bless him. He said he will bless the works of your hand. So that person is denying himself the blessings of God and is making himself an infidel. Don't encourage that person. The Bible said such a one have denied the faith. In 1 Timothy 5 verse 5. So don't help the man who can help himself. Encourage them to go and walk with their hands. If not, the devil will put you in a condition and say, what do you mean? 
help is meant for those who need help it's not a waste of, of kingdom resources in case you have so much you don't know what to do there's a place he said bring it to the apostles feet the apostles will help you to administer it don't throw it around for a lazy man somebody lies down like this he wakes up by 12 and then he comes to you say i never chop today uh -huh. that's good go and look for something to do you will think when you are walking Bishop Oedek will say those days, some young men will come to church and say, transport. Say, what do you mean? Don't transport anybody to church. He said, when they are trekking home, they will think. <laughs> he said, I pity no man. Every man is a function of his decisions. So if you want to help a man, help him change his decisions. If he makes the right choices, his life will change. Even the people of the world know better. They say, don't give fish to people. Teach them how to fish. That way they will become independent. That's why if I come into any organization, I say, what is the structure? How does it work? I, d I don't ever want to be at the mercy of anybody. When you see me today, you say, take. You see me tomorrow, I have a need. I say, daddy, sir. You say, eh, take. Oh, you say, ha, ha, hope all is well. Eh, call me to the office, say, take. Don't do, I don't need that. Don't give me money. I sold to Apostle Arume. I want to stand. I don't want people to carry me around. It's babies that are carried walk it is dignity the bible said in every labor there's reward and there is dignity in labor so don't throw your pairs to lazy people and wanton people who don't want to become strong when you help the right person you become an answer to prayers the reason jesus the, i said jesus the reason is the spirit of christ the reason the bible says to help strangers help widows help the fatherless is because these people god calls himself their father in the law he says he is the husband of the widow is the father of the fatherless so when you help them you're actually becoming the god that they look up to and in the new testament context beyond the widow a fatherless person is somebody that needs help you become an answer to the person's prayer you can be on the road somebody runs out of fear is traveling he ran into a lot of circumstances and then is stranded or somebody is traveling maybe he was robbed or something happened he doesn't have money you can always extend the hand of fellowship but when you see somebody who doesn't want to help himself don't contribute to his failure tell him to go and walk and that's why most times you need to ask people question before you help them don't just see somebody crying <laughs> i say take 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 what is wrong with you is there nobody to help you why are you like this find out when I'm doing, when I'm teaching you spirit, spirit civilization, that's when I'll teach you about demonic intelligence. You will be shocked. You will be shocked. You don't know the things, the manipulation that happen in the heavenlies. See, I told you the preternatural realm is the soulish realm. That's where your soul engages. Demons are there, angels are there. They, a lot of manipulations take place there. And if your prayer doesn't have authority in that realm, you will not have answers. Your answer can come for heaven, from heaven. They will hold it. They will hijack it there. <laughs> the Lord Jesus will help. So those are the seven ministries. Have you seen something about ministry? So which one is your area? While we were talking. Which one is your dimension? Hope you know the one God has asked you to do. Some of you discover you are people who are called to help. Some of you discovered you are into administration. That's why everywhere you go, they say, Hey, come now, come now. Uh, you come and lead us today. It is the grace that is speaking. Have you? Some of you notice that everywhere you go, somehow you just come to leadership. Everywhere you go, you come to leadership. It's a grace. It's a ministry that God has given to you. That ministry is what makes people want you always to come up. It's for administration. Some of you are into teaching. All of these dimensions, this is how it works. I hope you enjoyed this video and I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video 
to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also, if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.